In this video, I'm going to show you how to implement long-running tasks using Hangfire and SignalR. I'm also going to discuss what are some trade-offs that you need to consider. For example, we're going to compare long polling to server push. I'm going to show you three implementations for executing a long-running background job from a Blazor WebAssembly client. And we're going to start with a blocking implementation where we're going to wait for the entire duration of the background job just as a base case to compare it to the other two implementations. So I'm going to create an endpoint and call it reports version 1. Inside of this endpoint, I'm just going to inject an I logger of type program and I'm going to use this to write some information logs. And then inside of my request delegate, I'm going to say logger log information and I'm going to say starting background job. And then what I want to do is to just delay the execution for, let's say, 10 seconds. So I'm going to say task delay and I'll say time span from seconds and let's specify 10 seconds. Then I'm going to write another information log and I'm going to say completed background job just so that we can track what is going on behind the scenes. And let's return the result from this endpoint. Let's just say completed. I'm not going to actually be creating any report. We are just simulating that some work is being done by waiting for 10 seconds. Now, in reality, this could be much more than 10 seconds. We could be talking in minutes or even hours to generate a report. So this is what we will start with on the backend. Let's head over to the Blazor WebAssembly application. And I'm going to add a section here that's going to represent the version one of our implementation where we are just going to execute a blocking call to the backend and wait for the long running task to complete. Now I'm going to be grouping these implementations into regions so that it's a bit easier for us to compare them once we are done. So let's call this get report version one. I'm going to create a Boolean field that I will call disabled and I'm going to use it to disable a button once I call the backend API and then we are going to enable the button once the request completes. Now I need to implement my method to call my API endpoint and it's going to be called get report version one async. This is going to be an asynchronous method. We already gave it a name, so get report version one async. And what I need to be calling my backend is to inject an HTTP client instance. I already configured this to call my backend API with the default route. At the start of our method, I'm going to set the disabled flag to true to turn off the button so that it's not clickable. Then I'm going to execute my API request. So we're going to say await HTTP client, I'll call get string async, and we need to specify the route that we are calling, which is reports version one. After I'm done with this, I'm going to say disabled is false, and I need to create one more field, which is going to represent my response. So this is going to be a nullable string. I can give it a default value. And let's say when we execute our request, I'm going to set the response to null. And once we are done, I'm going to set the response value to be the string that I get back. I'm going to set the response value to be the string that we get back from my backend endpoint. So let's give this a try so that you can see what is actually going to happen. So here's our Blazor application. And when I click this button, it's going to become disabled because we are waiting for our backend call to complete. Now this is going to take 10 seconds or however long your long running task takes to complete. And you can see once we are done, we get the completed result. So now I can send the request again. The button is again going to be disabled. And after 10 seconds pass, we're going to get the response back from our API. Now, the reason that this implementation isn't ideal is because we are blocking the user interface while a very long running operation is executing in the background. And we have no guarantee how fast this operation is going to complete or if it's going to complete at all. So in most cases, there is no value for actually waiting for this job to complete. And this brings us to the next implementation that I want to show you, which is completely asynchronous. Let's go back to our backend application where I have Hangfire configured to run using a Postgres database. And this time we're actually going to be executing a background job using Hangfire. I'm going to start by defining a class that's going to represent my long running job. So let's call it the long running job. I'm going to inject one dependency that's going to be a Nile logger and I'm going to specify my long running job as the generic argument. And then inside of my long running job, I'm going to expose one method. I'll call it execute async, and it can even accept a cancellation token that we can pass to any asynchronous methods inside. 
Now the implementation is going to be the same as I had in this endpoint, except we won't be returning a value because this is a background job. There's nothing to return to the caller because this is running completely asynchronously and separately from the API request. And I'm also going to pass in the cancellation token here. So you can see that this is doing the same amount of work. Let's call it that. The job is going to take 10 seconds to complete, but we are going to be executing this as a background job. To actually start our job, I'm going to expose another endpoint, and this time I'm going to use a post endpoint, and let's call it reports version 2. This time around, I'm going to need a dependency, and this dependency is going to be a background job client. This is an abstraction from Hangfire that's going to allow me to programmatically schedule my background job and I'm going to use this to add my long running job to the queue. Hangfire has a really nice abstraction that allows me to work with dependency injection. So I'm going to register my service as a transient service with dependency injection because my only real dependency is the iLogger. So let me show you what we can do here. I'm going to call the background job client and I can call the enqueue method. Now there's a generic overload where I can specify what is the service that I want to resolve from dependency injection. So this is going to be my long running job. And then I can provide a delegate that lets me access the long running job and call any methods on this job instance. And I'm going to call the execute async method to start my background job. Now this method is also going to return a job ID because this job is first going to be added to the database before it's executed. And then what I'm going to do is return an accepted result. This is going to return a 202 status code to the caller. And I can use this to provide a URI where the client can poll to get the information about the job status. I'm actually going to use the accepted at route method and I'm going to specify a route with the name of job details. Now the route values are going to contain our job ID and I can also return the job ID as the value from this response. Now I'm going to expose another method. This is going to be a get endpoint. It's going to be called jobs and I'm going to have a job ID route parameter. I'm going to define the job ID in the request delegate and then I can define my endpoint. And what I'm going to do here is to get the details for this job by using the job storage abstraction from Hangfire. I can access the current instance and then I can call get monitoring API and call the job details endpoint. I can specify now my job ID to get back a job details instance. And really what I want to do is just to return the latest status of this job. So I'm going to say job details history order by descending. And then I'm going to order this based on the created at time. And once I'm done sorting, I can access the first value and return the state name. This is going to represent the status of our background job with this specific job ID. I also need to give this route a name by calling with name and I'm going to specify job details. And now when I call accepted that route, it's going to resolve the route with this specific name, construct the URI for this route, which is going to be fully qualified to my backend. And it's going to set this value in the location header of the response. And this is the information that I'm going to be using on my client side to get the current status of my job. So let's go back to our Blazor application. And I'm going to add another section here, which is going to be version two. And here we're going to be using polling. So what we will do is send a post request by clicking on this button. We're going to call the reports version two endpoint, which is going to enqueue a background job. And then we're going to poll the endpoint with the job ID to get the information about the background job status until we see that the background job has completed. So let's start by adding another region. I'm going to call this get report version two. And let's see what we need. I'm going to add a string variable that's going to contain my job ID value. And I'm going to add a list with strings inside that's going to represent my polling status, which I will be executing every one second. And let's start with an empty array. Then I'm going to define a method called get report version two async and let's define this method. So I'm going to start it in much the same way as the previous implementation. We're going to disable all of the buttons on the user interface so that no one can call the backend while a request is executing. I'm going to clear the polling status by giving it a default value and let's also clear the job ID. Then I'm going to call my backend using the HTTP client. We're going to call post async because now we have a post endpoint and we're calling the reports version two endpoint. I'm going to pass in null for the request content and then I'm going to set the job ID from this response. So I'm going to say response content read as string async. Of course, because this is an async method, I need to await it. But this is only part of the work. Now I need to define a periodic timer 
that's going to trigger every one second. So I'll say new periodic timer, time span from seconds, and let's pass in one second. I'm going to define a variable to represent the last state that we got back from the response. And then I'm going to define a while loop that's going to execute every time the periodic timer is supposed to tick. We're going to get this value by waiting for the next tick. And I'm also going to compare the last state that I'm storing as a variable. And I want to make sure that the last state is not succeeded. So what I'm doing here is until we get the state of succeeded from our API, we are going to continue executing the timer. And then inside of the loop, I'm going to call the endpoint to get the job state. So last state is going to get the value that we will get from the HTTP client. And I'm going to call get string async. And the URI that we are calling is going to come from the HTTP response message from the reports version 2 endpoint. And here I'm going to access the response headers and I'm going to use the location header that's going to be automatically assigned by the accepted result on the backend. I'm also going to update the polling status collection and add the last state that we got from our backend. And finally, after we have completed our loop, I'm going to set the disabled state to false. So let me show you how this version works. One more thing before I can run the application is I need to call state has changed to update my user interface after adding the last state value to the collection that I defined here. And now let me show you how this new version works. So we're back in the Blazor client UI and I'm going to call the version two of my reports endpoint. And this time we're going to get the job ID immediately and we will start polling the endpoint that's going to give us the job status. And you can see that it's currently processing. And after 10 seconds, we're going to get back the response that the job has succeeded, which means it's completed successfully. And you can see that the buttons are now enabled. If I send the request again, they're going to be disabled. We get the new job ID, and we continue polling the backend until we get the response details. This implementation is greatly improved than the second one because we don't really have to be blocking the user interface while we are polling our backend for the background job status. You also don't have to be polling every one second. You can do it with a larger increment depending on what makes sense for your use case. Another benefit of this approach is that it's completely asynchronous. So once I get the response back from my reports endpoint, I don't have to block the client anymore. I can rely on the polling on my user interface to get new information. However, the downside is we are sending a lot of unnecessary requests to the server, which does increase the load on the server and on the database, which brings me to the last implementation that I want to show you that is both asynchronous and also optimized from the standpoint of resource utilization. I'm back in the backend API and I'm going to add another endpoint, which is going to be reports version three. Let's also return the same response as in the version two endpoint. However, I'm going to add an improvement here by injecting an iHub context. So this is an abstraction from SignalR and SignalR is a library for implementing real-time communication between your client and server applications. I'll have to configure these SignalR services. So I'm going to say builder services, add SignalR, and then I'm going to use the iHub context to invoke a method on my client. I'm going to make this asynchronous and then I'm going to use my hub context to access all of the clients that are connected to my hub instance. In reality, you're going to want to scope this to the particular user that actually called this endpoint. But for simplicity, let's just execute a broadcast message. So I'm going to access all of the clients and then I will call the send async method. And let's call a method called receive notification that we are going to define in our Blazor application. And I'm going to pass it just this message that we started processing the job with this job ID. A few more components that I need are the SignalR hub. This can be just an empty class and you will need to expose this hub on a particular endpoint. You can call the map hub method, specify your strongly typed hub, and then you can define what is the endpoint where your client applications can connect to this hub. So let's just call this notifications. Now the second improvement I'm going to make is to use a slightly different implementation of my background job. So instead of using the long running job that we have here, I'm going to make another copy and I'm going to call this long running job with notification. What I'm going to change here is I'm also going to inject an iHub context. I can even make it strongly typed by providing the notification hub, although this isn't a requirement. So let's use the hub context. And what I want to do 
is to send another notification to my client application. I'm going to do it right after I complete processing the job. And let's just send the method that we have completed processing the job. I don't have information about the job ID here, but this wouldn't be too difficult to pass to the background job instance. Now let's also register this with dependency injection as we did with our previous job. And then I'm going to enqueue this implementation of my background job in my version free endpoint. So I'm going to specify it here in the enqueue method. And then we need to make some updates in our Blazor implementation. So I'm going to add the user interface parts for the version free, which is going to be using WebSockets with SignalR. And it's going to look the same as in version two. There's going to be a button that we will use to call our endpoint. And I'm going to be updating some state on the user interface. I also installed the SignalR package inside of my Blazor application. And the NuGet package name is Microsoft ASP.NET Core SignalR client. So this is going to allow me to connect to the hub on my backend API. So let's define another region that I will call get report version free. And this is going to be our final implementation. And then let me show you what we will have inside. I'm going to define a hub connection. This is how I'm going to be connecting to my SignalR hub. Then I'm going to have a list for appending my background job status and the background job ID for the WebSocket implementation. Then I'm going to add a method that's going to be calling the version three of my report endpoint. And we're just going to use it to obtain the job ID. And what's left is for me to connect to my SignalR hub. For this, you can override the uninitialized async method. Inside of it, you can create a new hub connection builder, specify what is the URL that's pointing to your hub. You can see I'm referencing the notifications endpoint, which is how we mapped the notification hub on our backend. And then I'm using the hub connection to define a callback when we get the receive notification message. If the hub is sending you any details, you can process that inside of a callback. I'm just going to append the message to the list of statuses and update the user interface. And finally, I'm going to start the hub connection and let's give the version free a try. So let's execute our version free implementation that's using WebSockets. And you can see that we immediately get the job ID from our backend and we also get the message from our hub context. And now we're going to wait a few seconds and you can see that we get another message that the job was completed. And this message could contain the endpoint where the current user could download the report. If I execute this again, we're going to get another job ID. And after a few seconds, we're going to get the message that the job was completed. This implementation was a bit more complex from a technical standpoint because we needed to add another service, which was SignalR, and then configure the SignalR client to connect to the respective hub. And on the backend, we also needed to define the hub and use the hub context to push messages. Now, depending on your specific implementation, you don't even have to use SignalR. This could be something like an email service where after the background job completes, you're going to send the email to the respective user and give them a link where they can download the report. Another benefit of this is that you can retry the background job if you run into an issue at any point. And let's say the job fails halfway through the work. You can also store how much of the report you generated and then when the job starts again, you can continue from where you left off. If you want to learn more about executing background jobs using Hangfire, then you should watch this video next. Also, make sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and until next time, stay awesome.